Hello, my name is Michelle Arsenault and I'm the owner of the Inglewood Fine Arts Gallery in Calgary. I have a passion for art that originated the day I bought my first Carson nearly 25 years ago. The passion I have for Carson's work has never diminished. Over the years I've added to my collection of Carson paintings and I've closely followed his meteoric rise on the international stage. I've become an impassioned fan of his work and it was therefore without a moment's hesitation that I accepted the offer to become his agent for Western Canada. There is something in a Carson painting that moves me in a way no other living artist is able to do. The vivacity and juxtaposition of the colors, the depth of the forms and figures that reveal their secrets little by little, even after many years and countless viewings. How can I best describe this mysterious and unique aspect of Carsonism. I would not be so presumptuous as to attempt an analysis of Carson's unique pictorial writing that sets him apart from others. Instead, I will attempt to describe how the artist's work touches me on an emotional level that never decreases in intensity. Since having moved to Calgary, I live in hope of one day entering a gallery and finding the painting that makes me feel the way I feel when I revel in the beautiful setting of the Rockies. There are a handful of gifted artists who have succeeded in capturing the beauty of these mountains, but none have made me feel the immensity of their power. The way I do when I contemplate an underwater scene or an autumn setting as depicted by Carson's brush. Carson has mastered his art, quite simply because he has managed, as few contemporary artists before him, to capture and portray his vision of beauty with a rare sensitivity. His ability to be moved by simple things, often unnoticeable to others, has shaped Charles Carson to view life with such acuity and intensity that our vision of the world is embellished as a consequence. Victor, I know that uh, you did also the interview uh, in your magazine about uh, Carlson. You met the man. Talk to me about, about him. Talk to me about the artist as well. Charles is a tough man. <laughs> he is dedicated to his craft. Nothing will deter him from his mission in life. Mm. And a lot of people have skills. A lot of people have talents. A lot of people have gifts. But the trick in this life, the mission in our life, is to use these skills and these talents and these gifts to the best of our abilities. And if you're blessed with that and selling art, then really hit it good. And you know, to look at a painting like this, if you don't mind, I'd like to spend two seconds on this particular of painting. Of course. This particular style is, is uh, fascinating and, and uh, it's historic because he's, he's channeling Jackson Pollock and Sam Francis, and, and but with his own version of it, which, which, uh, as an art historian, as someone who really loves the continuation of the culture, which is what I, I love. That's what I love about it. professionally. Mm -hmm. I love to be able to continue the culture down from a generation to the next generation. So young people can look at this and they can say, "Oh wow, this guy. He, he's seen Jackson Pollock. He's seen Sam Francis, but he's done things to these paintings that." those geniuses didn't think of doing. Hmm. So that's why Charles is making his mark and has made his mark. He can hold his own with a lot of these greats. And he's young. And so it's interesting. He's got a lot, a lot going for himself. A lot. He's in a good position to, uh, to make a big artistic statement. He's already made a big artistic statement, but he's in a good position for something very big to happen. I was interested in art since I was very young because uh, at a very young age I realized that artists are very sensitive people and uh, 
usually they tell us, uh, you know, readily uh, how the world is behaving and what will happen long before it happens. They need help, they need support, and we have to do it while they're alive. Uh, that's uh, about the best thing we can do for artists, is be there for them to make sure that they can keep, uh, you know, uh, creating and communicating to us things that we wouldn't uh, otherwise see or understand. I think that what art uh, brings in your life is uh, the richness of life itself. And um, if you're creative yourself and you can appreciate what others are trying to communicate to you, well, it only makes your life a lot more interesting. How do you define a great painter? I mean, it's a very, very uh, complicated subject. I'm motivated more by what uh, the artists I know, the artists that are producing, the artists that are alive, that I can touch, that I can feel, that I can collect, you know, and I can really and truly appreciate and know that somehow, you know, I'm making it possible for him to do what he loves to do. I uh, had the pleasure of, make, uh, of meeting Charles uh, Carson at one of my friend's bistro, uh, at uh, the Bistro of Champlain, which is in, in St. Margaret. And everybody knows how this uh, doctor discovered a great passion for wines and also a great passion for art. And I would say that uh, that's what brought us together. Uh, I mean, Mr. Champlain happens to be also a friend, I believe. And um, that's how I met Charles. And, uh, uh, not only I, I found his work exceptionally interesting, but uh, again, uh, I met him personally and I found the person as interesting as his art. He's, he was one of the few uh, artists that I could communicate, uh, you know, for instance, uh, some analogy of what was going on in the world at large and in business and in this and that. So um, he's definitely a very attaching person and I could probably say today that he has become a friend. My name is Louis Brivens. I'm an art market consultant, lecturer and author of 15 art books, 50 years in the profession. I'm also president of the International Academy of Fine Art of Quebec. I have a little story to tell you. One day, over 20 years ago, I was visited by Charles Carlson, who came to present a superb painting. It was great and different than any I had ever seen in my career. In fact, I was really surprised and I told him directly, that's it, you're ready for the art market you can launch your career. I authored an exhaustive analysis of his pictorial work in 1990. From that moment on, it was with extreme gratification that I witnessed it, a significant collection of the artist's work. Since that time, the artist I followed a stupefying career path in North America, South America or in Europe Everywhere he passes, specialists, art historians, experts and gallery owners are unanimous in their praise. This kind of painting, or should I say this school of painting, this style, this workmanship, this modus operandi has become a real school. As of 1990, Guy Robert, founder of the Montreal Museum of Contemporary Art, Jacques de Roussel, art historian, author as well as myself, have firmly believed that we were in the presence of an exceptionally talented artist. Today, Charles Carson is renowned internationally for his creativity. Moreover, he has distinguished himself on the international stage over the years gathering numerous titles and prestigious prizes. He now carries with pride the title of Master of Fine Arts. Quebec has many artists. I've said it repeatedly, but there are certain ones that stand out, that go further, that transcend. 
Sarcasm is part of this select group. Catholicism will continue to flourish throughout the world. He goes further. There is a reason for this, and the reason is the quality of his art.